Good morning. Good morning. Wow, that was great. That was awesome. You guys are excited to be here. Well, we are glad that you are here with us this morning. Um, we have some announcements before we begin worship today. Um, the first announcement is it's a great time to open up your worship folders and check out all that's going on in the life of the church. And also to fill out those goldenrod inserts that are inside the worship folder. We love to know that you're here. There's a place for sign-ups on there, on the back side of that, as well as a place to share any special prayer requests that you might have that you'd like to share with staff. And you can drop those in the offering plates later in the service. Please know that if you're a guest with us here today, your presence is your gift to us. So a few things happening this week. On Wednesday, there will be a groundbreaking ceremony for the new worksite for Habitat for Humanity. Um, it will be Tuesday. The address is in your worship folder. Um, this particular area that they're going to begin work on is called the Dave Wallace Commons. And Dave Wallace was a very active member. He's here today with us. They now live in Texas, but he's back this week, and on Tuesday they will be dedicating and doing the groundbreaking for that area. So we are very thrilled for that project, as well as, as, well as Dave, for all of his work with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, second announcement is on Saturday there will be a family hike, um, Saturday at 10.30, and you can see Leah Slemons for more information. Leah, where should they meet? You're in a sanctuary if lightning strikes you on that good weather thing. I don't know if you can guarantee that, but we'll try. <laughs> and then uh, next Sunday, Pastor Andy and Pastor Emily will begin a new class here at 1 o'clock, and it's the Start Here class. So if you are new to St. John, want more information about it, want to spend a little extra time with Pastor Emily, getting to know her, um, you can join in that class at 1 o'clock next week, Sunday. Are there any other announcements this morning? Let us come into a time of worship. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Please rise for the call to worship if you're able. This morning's call is from the book of Psalms, chapter 4. It's taken. Let my whole being bless the Lord. You establish the earth on its foundations. You covered it with a watery deep like a piece of clothing. The waters were higher than the mountains. But at your rebuke, they ran away. They fled in fear at the sound of your thunder. They flowed over the mountains, streaming down the valleys to the place you established for them. 
You set a boundary they cannot cross. Let the Lord's glory last forever. Let the Lord rejoice in all his name. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. Let my whole being bless the Lord. Amen. Let's sing in our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, found on page 89 in the Red Hymnal. together in the prayer of the day. Our God, be seated. We are going to continue in our prayer time this morning as a church family as we share our joys and concerns with each other. What are some of the joys you have this morning? Mindy? As the soccer team remains trapped in the cave, four are out safely and they're working on the rest of them. Thank you, God. Other joys today? Yes, Thea? This is a, a bittersweet joy. Um, this is Jill and Margaret's last Sunday here as they move to their beautiful new retirement home in Washington State. And we'll take them down uh, this week. So thank you, God. Hallelujah. But we also trust this 
to prayer. We are so thankful for Bill and Margaret and all they have done for the life of St. John as they've grown their own faith faith here, as well as their family's faith, and we just wish you the best as you move on to new adventures. Thank you, God. Amen. Other joys this morning? Oh, Frida? Frida got to go backpacking with mom. Thank you, God. Amen. Other joys today? Yes, Mary Alice? For our St. John family, always being warm and welcoming. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. How about your concerns this morning? Mindy? To your prayers for our military and our families to make a great sacrifice for us and all those who have Yes, for continued prayers for our military as they serve us, as well as all those emergency responders and all of those who serve us in uniform, as well as their families as they support them. God, to your love. We Yes. Linda wants to lift up a request for our, the immigration problem and the leaders that are involved in that and helping those families be reunited. God to your love. Yes, Harry? For John, as he has heart surgery on Friday, as well as his wife Susan, as she supports him. God, to your love. We trust Yes. And what is her name? Linda. Linda. For Linda, who was just diagnosed with breast cancer. God, to your love. We trust yes, Kate. For Kate's mom, as she continues her breast cancer treatment and a couple more weeks of radiation. God, to your love. Yes, Sharon? Prayers for all of those traveling within our beautiful state this weekend uh, for safe travel as well as patience. God, to your love. Yes, Let us come into a time of quiet prayer. heavens and the earth. You caused rain to come upon the ground, gave life to the fertile soil, and knit us together from the dust of the earth. Praise be to God. You breathed life into us. You set us upon the earth to till and to keep it. You sustain us and provide for us all the days of our lives. Praise be to God. Lord, we come to you now with prayers heavy on our hearts for those who are sick or hurting, healing, for broken relationships, peace, for the homeless and outcast, community, for the United Methodist Church, understanding, for the boys in the cave in Thailand, safety, for our national leaders, guidance, for international relationships, peace. Lord, hear these prayers, those spoken in this communal space, and those held quietly in the innermost corners of our hearts. 
Make your presence known to us in the world, that we might be witnesses of your grace. We praise you for the life that bursts from the earth and for the love that holds us in community as we pray in the way that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We ask that children of all ages come and join some, some time with Pastor Emily. met me but you can come on in it's okay <laughs> my name is pastor Emily and I know I don't know a lot of you yet but I'm really looking forward to getting to know you I have a couple questions for you all today um, have you ever been told not to do something yeah a couple what, what have you been told not to do To not run away too far from your parents. Yeah, that's a good one. They want you close by, huh? What else? Why, 
Why do you think people sometimes tell you not to do things? Because they want you to be safe. Yeah, that's a great answer. Okay, so on, on the other side of things, have you ever been told to go do something really, really well? Or gotten help doing something? What was that like? Learn how to ride a bike? Oh, learning how to read. Yeah, that's so big, and we need help doing that sometimes. All right, let's keep our head out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> God is kind of like those people that help us do things. Sometimes, sometimes God has limits, right? But also, God wants us to be able to do things, too. Did you know that? Yeah, God is kind of like those people. Did you know that God created each one of you to do something special? Yeah. Did you know that God invites us to share in the work that God is doing in the world? What do you think God's work is like? Do you think when we invite our friends to play with us that that's sharing in the work that God wants us to do? Yeah? Maybe? Mm -hmm. We can think about that one some more. Yeah. God created each of you to share in the love that God is sharing in the world. Would anybody like to pray with us? Pray for us today? All right, Freya, go ahead and pray. I'm sad that Daphne has diarrhea. (laughs) All right, can we bring that to God in prayer? Hey, God, care for Daphne. All right. Amen. Amen. (laughs) All right. I'm still, I'm still learning the order of things here. Um, let's all join in the hymn, uh, the United Methodist Hymnal in your red book, number 593, Here I Am, Lord. Oh, oh wait, before that, real quick. Um, children are welcome to stay and worship with their families, but if you are under the age of three and want to go to children's worship, um, we have that in over here. <laughs> All right, go right over there to children's worship, okay? (laughs) Now we can sing.
Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 4 through 17. These are the generations of the heavens and earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when, the, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the, the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to sight and good for food. The tree of life <clears throat> excuse me, is also there in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Havilah. There is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Delium and ox, onyx stone is there. The name of the second river is Gion, and it is the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. And the third name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For on that day that you eat of it, you shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, spoiler alert, they eat of the tree. <laughs> the first humans have this whole garden and they eat of the one tree that God said to stay away from. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Emily. It's my second Sunday here with you all. It's been a wonderful first week, and I thank you all for your welcome. Um, during the summer, we're doing the gospel according to Pixar, and when Andy first told me that, um, I picked the movie Moana to go along with this sermon, which is a Disney movie, and I picked the text from Genesis, which doesn't come from a gospel. So we're going to have to use our imaginations a little bit to hear the good news from the Disney movie Moana. Would you all pray with me? Speak, O oh Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth, plant it in us so that the light of Christ might be seen. Amen. Amen. It is often common to read this narrative in Genesis as an explanation for all of the problems that we have today. The first humans disobeyed God, resulting in banishment from the garden and the, and the life that is full of hardship, anxiety, and sin. But I think it is more fruitful to read this narrative not only as a picture of the human condition, but also as the reality that we find ourselves in today. There is more to this story than just the transgression of God's command to not eat the fruit of one tree. And we learn more about our humanness as created by God than just our ability to break the rules. To illustrate, we'll turn to the movie Moana. Um, raise your hand if you've seen this movie. Okay, good, we've got a few. Um, if you haven't, I won't ruin the ending, but you should go see it soon. Um, Moana is the story of a young woman who lives on a lush, beautiful, tropical island. And her father is the chief of the village, and he insists that the island has everything that they need to live. They don't need to leave the island. But Moana, of course, is called to sail the seas. 
A village legend tells of the mother island named Tefiti, whose heart could create life. But a demigod named Maui stole Tefiti's heart, spreading darkness over the world. When that darkness reaches Moana's island, she knows she must go find Maui, return to Fiti's heart, and restore the life to her community. In this creation story in Genesis, we learn three things about humans, and different characters in Moana display these traits for us. First, we learn that humans are called to tend and keep the earth. We might call this vocation. Second, we learn that humans are gifted with the goodness of life. We might call this permission. And third, we learn that humans are limited by God to keep God's command. We might call this prohibition. And since prohibition is the one we all know the most about, let's start with that one. of Tefiti. He steals the source of life that Tefiti shared with the world and takes it for his own keeping. Without her heart, Tefiti unleashes an incredible darkness that strangles life from the earth. In the movie, this act of transgression, this act of going beyond one's created role in the world, sets off a series of events that requires Moana to make a dangerous voyage across the sea. The demigod Maui takes that which is not his and in doing so disrupts the order of life. By taking the heart, Maui claims the ability to be able to create life apart from the mother island and destroys the integrity of the world as it was created. Likewise, in Genesis, the first humans take of the tree that is not theirs, disobeying God and violating the cohesiveness of the community. I wonder if we ever take beyond what we are given. It seems to me that we might be faced almost daily with the temptation to transgress beyond that which God has prohibited. We often try to play God. We think we can handle whatever life throws at us without relying on the God who sustains us. We too often assert our own achievements as our own doing rather than giving praise to the God who provides us with the capacity to, to achieve. And sometimes we hold so firmly to an opinion that we miss the breath of God moving in and out of us that urges us to see a different way. And when we take that which is not ours, when we put ourselves in the place of God and attempt to control our lives in the world, we inevitably disrupt the bonds of communion that God, our creator, so lovingly
And in this clip, clip, we see Moana's grandma, who clearly has something to say, and we see Moana, unsure of her path, trying to figure out what's right and do what she needs to do, place her stone on the mountain and accept her responsibility to stay on the island and guide her people as their chief. But Grandma clearly has another idea. While the rest of the villagers try to mediate danger by guarding themselves on the island, Grandma knows that the dangerous sea might just hold the answer. When darkness comes to the island, it is Grandma who encourages Moana to act, to enter into the danger of the sea, and to embark on a journey to return the heart of Tefiti that Maui stole. Grandma gives Moana the permission she needs to truly live. Much of our lives are often touched by fear. Most advertising capitalizes on the fears of our own insecurities, that we won't fit in, that we are missing out, that we aren't safe. Fear of the unknown, our anxiety about life that we cannot control, often captures us, holds us down, and refuses to let us live. But God invites us to life. God invites us to turn our anxiety, our fear of the unknown, and give it back to God. Before we are afraid, we are to live. And sometimes we need a reminder from Grandma that living involves risks we have to be willing to take. Finally, in the Genesis narrative, we learn that we are called. God not only creates us, God calls us to vocation, to participation in life with God. In this last clip that we'll watch of Moana, she is being chosen, called by the sea to embark on a journey particular to her. scene, the ocean is inviting Moana in, envelopes her, the ocean provides for her, and guides her on her task in restoring the heart of Tefiti. Moana is called. After that, her life changes. She belongs on the sea, and she is most alive when she is following the water, following that which calls her. And like Moana, the first humans in the Genesis narrative are called. In Hebrew, the Adam, right, the Adam, is formed from the Adama. The Adam comes from the Adama. As the name, in English, this might translate to the earthling being formed from the earth. And as the name implies, this earthling is of the earth integrally connected to the flourishing of the rest of creation. 
In calling the earthlings to tend and keep the earth, God invites us to share in the work that brings life to the world. In the creation of humans, God calls us to be part of the earth as co-creators with God. We are each called to a journey that only we can walk, given a vocation to share in God's work that only we can do. That vocation looks different for each of us and will change shape and direction in our lives. And vocation might be very different from your job. What you do for income doesn't necessarily have to be what defines you. It is a part of your life, but you are also called to God's work. In the sacrament of baptism, we recognize that we are each called into ministry. Not everyone has to preach, but each of you in this room are invited to share in the work that God is doing in the world. Theologian Frederick Buchner describes vocation as where your greatest joy meets the world's greatest need. And all of our joys meet needs of the world in different places and in different times and with different people. The remarkable part is that God calls each of us. Just like the water tapped Moana's head and guided her to her destination, so too God encircles us, taps our hearts, supports and sustains and calls us to be God's hands and feet in the world. Each of these characteristics of humans, prohibition, permission, and vocation, work together. Our task is to find a way to balance these aspects of our divine purpose. Without any one of the characteristics, we are sure to lose our way. If we disregard the prohibitions, the communal fabric of our lives is disrupted. If we ignore the permissions, the joy and fullness of life is sacrificed. And if we forget that we are called, we forget that we are called to the task of co-creation with God. These characters in Moana show that these three aspects of human life are dynamic. Prohibition, permission, and vocation feed off of one another. Moana is able to live into her vocation because of the prohibitions and permissions that guide her along the way. Likewise, God guides each of us. God limits us in care for us. God, moreover, God trusts us with those limits and calls us to life so that we ourselves can be co-creators with God. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us join together in our affirmation of faith. We believe in God, the creator of all things, the giver of life and breath. We believe in Jesus Christ, born in Emmanuel, God with us, baptized in the real, the most beloved Son of God. He sought to heal humanity by taking our brokenness upon himself, suffering for us, dying for us, and being raised. Let's respond to the word of this morning as our ushers come forward to receive our tithes and offerings.
before us and those we take out in our lives. We pray that they might be used to further your work in the world. Amen. Amen. If you would all remain standing and join in our closing hymn. It's in the Faith We Sing book, which is the little black book in your pews. It's also on the screen, The Trees of the Field. <laughs> 